Action kicks off in this game at 100-200 with a $200 ante. Mariano kicks the action off here under the gun, raising with the King-10 of diamonds. The hand happens pretty quickly pre-flop here, so you really have to stay tuned. Char Charles 3-bets the button with 8-7 of hearts to $2,000. Now the action's over to Andy in the big blind with Ace-4 of diamonds. Let's pause here for a moment. Andy decides to just go ahead and call. I think with Ace-4 of diamonds, you really want to lean towards raises. This hand doesn't play super well out of position. As you get deeper, it gets better, and these players are massively deep. So I can see what Andy's thinking. Hey, if I flop the nut flush draw or improve the nut flush, I can play for all of it, and we've got piles of money. So that aspect is certainly good. But the reality is that unless you you flop a flush draw or the nut flush in some spots, you're really going to be in situations where either you have nothing and have to fold, a pair of fours and probably have to fold, or an ace that loses to every other ace that someone could be raising preflop. So personally, when I have ace four diamonds here, even this deep, I would really prefer to just go ahead and four bet this, make it six, six or 8,000, something in that range, um, knock some opponents out of the pot, give myself an opportunity to build this pot when I have a big hand preflop, like aces, kings, queen, ace, king. Uh, and then also I have some fold equity and some good card removal against it. Andy does decide to go ahead and just call this three bet from Charles. And now the action's back over to Mariano. With King of Diamonds, he decides to go ahead and four bet to $9,000. I don't hate the idea of every now and then four betting when you do have a hand like King 10 suited. I will say, typically speaking, the bluffs that are nicer to use... Uh, or the semi-bluffs, I guess I should say, are the hands like Ace-5 suited, Ace-4 suited, Ace-10 suited. Um, maybe some some suited connectors are a little bit better as well. Some lower ones like 6-7 suited or 8-7 suited. The reason is that when you have the King and the 10 in your hand, you actually prefer your opponent to have those cards because those cards are hands that will struggle against 4-bets. If Andy or Charles have a hand like King-Queen suited, 10-9 uh, suited, pocket 10s, uh, ace 10 suited, uh, king jack suited, all those types of holdings, jack 10 suited. Those are strong hands, but they're not hands that are particularly strong facing a, a four bet. So I don't mind using some suited kings every now and then your four bet range, but you typically do want to lean more towards those suited aces, hands like what Andy has here as your main re-raise hands. Back over to Charles, eight seven suited, very deep here. Don't mind the idea of flatting in position. Uh, that said, it is $9,000 to go, and he made it 2K preflop. So I think I'd probably let the 872 to go every now and then. As you get deeper, calling becomes more reasonable. Anyway, he does decide to call, and he decides to call, and we take a flop. One note here before we get to the flop, Andy does decide to call once again your ace-4 suited. I think I would be folding here. He's going to be out of position against these these players. Uh, his his uh, Essentially, his stack to pot ratio is also declining. He has less bets behind. Again, I just don't feel like this is the kind of hand you particularly want. You want hands that can at least hit some pairs that you can be somewhat confident in or have some better straight drop potential to give you more ways to win the pot post-flop. Uh, I, I really just feel like this hand needs to be either re-raised or uh, folded entirely. Anyway, to the flop we go, and the flop is a banger. Queen, Jack, Nine, Three, Diamonds. Now Mariano flops a straight flush. That's pretty pretty much as good as you can get here for the King Ten Diamonds. And it is the nightmare scenario for the nut flush where he has what would normally be the nuts, but because there are straight flushes possible, it's not the nuts, and his opponent has it. Andy checks over to Mariano. Now with the King Ten of Diamonds here, a bit of an interesting situation. Typically speaking on these flush draw type, on these flush flop boards, um, the way that they work in uh, computer land is that typically speaking, players don't bet that often. When they do bet, they bet kind of small. And a lot of different hands might want to bet a uh, better check on the flop. Everything mixes at a low frequency. So to put the nerd stuff to the side for a moment, uh, I think occasionally betting something like, you know, $6,000 here in Mariano's shoes or $9,000 in Mariano's shoes is a pretty good play. You could even bet smaller than that if you want. And also looking to check sometimes as well. They're both totally fine options and you want to be doing both. I'll also note that this board, if you think about the kinds of hands, when Mariano four bets, the kinds of hands that call a four bet here for the other players, they really do smash this board. Lots of hands like uh, pocket nines, pocket jacks, pocket queens, all totally possible here. Uh, queen jack suited, jack nine suited, certainly possible. Jack 10 suited has an open ender. Uh, qu king queen suited top pair in a gutter. 
Those hands aren't super strong, but they have enough equity to probably call at least a bet. Uh, if someone has ace king with a diamond, obviously that's a big hand if they have the ace of diamonds. So this is a board where there are a lot of hands for Mariano's opponent that uh, he can he could essentially look to either value bet or check. But Mariano might be playing a strategy where he checks his entire range here because there are two guys that both could smash this board. Mariano goes ahead and checks it over to Charles. Charles with a gutter here decides to just check it back. Totally reasonable to not take a stab with no equity. Don't mind the idea of a small bet here, but also totally fine to just check it back. Okay, we take a turn three ways, and that turn is the three of hearts. Now that the three of hearts on board, players should start to heat up a little bit. Uh, essentially... Charles is going to have the weakest range of the three players. Andy can have any hand. He's going to check his whole range on the flop. Mariano should have lots of good hands still. He should be very careful on this flop and check as well. But Charles, when he checks back the flop, he should mainly have a lot of weak hands. If Charles has a hand like a set or a flush or straight, he should primarily be betting because you want to build the pot. The solver does not oftentimes check back very strong hands. Now, on a board like this, I'm sure it would occasionally check some sets and some straights and stuff like that, and even a few flushes. But typically speaking, your very good hands are going to be betting here in position. So Andy and Mariano both know that Charles is pretty weak, but they can both have strong hands. Now Andy has to make a decision here out of position on the turn. How does he want to go ahead with his nut flush? He can decide to either check and trap his hand or bet and build a pot. Typically speaking, when you have the flushes where you have a high card and a low kicker, those hands tend to bet. And the reason is pretty simple. Imagine if Andy had ace 10 of diamonds or ace king of diamonds. In that scenario, neither of the other players can have a really high diamond or it's very unlikely they have a high diamond because he has so much of the board locked up. When you have the ace uh, ace high flush with the low kicker, like ace four of diamonds, it's a lot better to bet because in that situation, your opponent can have a lot more flush draw or straight draw flush or kind of hands that can continue. So typically speaking here in Andy's shoes, I'd like to go for about a one third pot bet, uh, $9,000. I would bet this hand almost always. And I would look to then balance it out with maybe some hands like ace king with a diamond, if I can have that. Maybe even turn a hand like eights with a diamond into a bluff or eights. Essentially, I'm going to look for some bluff candidates go through all of those, and then bet my value bets that don't block the continues. Anyway, Andy does check, which is fine, especially this deep. It's fine to check and look for a way to play for all of it on a later street. Now for Mariano. He's got the straight flush, a lot of checks on board. It's time to start building the pot. Uh, I don't think at this point you want to check too often. It's unlikely Charles has something very good, and you need to start building this pot. Mariano size about $8,000. I, I really like this bet from Mariano. It's about one-third pot, a little bit less. Uh, certainly the kind of bet he would want to make if he had a hand like, let's just say he had aces with a diamond or even black aces, maybe a hand like ace queen. There are a lot of hands here that would like to bet, protect their equity a little bit, maybe get some value, knock some players out of the pot. And he does know that his players are a lot, or his opponents are much more likely to be weak. So this is a nice sized bet for Mariano. I really like how he's played this hand so far. Charles gets out of the way. Now over to Andy. And look, guys, before we get into what Andy does from here, because obviously this ends up being a very large pot, this is a brutal, 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 brutal cooler situation. You're definitely going to lose a lot of money. There's no way around it. In fact, if this board breaks out, you should really lose all of it. You know, if players are playing well, they should both probably lose all their money unless someone makes a really sick read. So the question for Andy really becomes how can he play his hand in a way that makes him the most money, recognizing when this kind of spot happens, you are going to lose a lot of money. He decides to go ahead and check raise here. I like that play for the same reason that we liked betting to begin with with Andy's hand on the turn. We also like check raising. He does not block a lot of the hands that can call raises. If Marion had kings with a diamond or if he did check back the flop with a flush or a straight uh, or if he has a hand like two pair or a set, all totally possible hands and he does not block any of them. So I do definitely like check raising here and I think this check raise size should be large and you should be looking to bet large on the river as well. I think when you check raise the turn here on a brick, typically speaking, solver is like a geometric size, which means you bet the same size on the turn as the river. So you check raise massive on this turn and you look to just ship some rivers. They're so deep. I don't know if that is still the case. I've not looked at many 1500 blind Sims. That said, you can't go wrong with either just using a large size and I imagine geometric would be fine as long as Andy is very polarized when he does it, meaning he has either an ace or a king of diamonds, or he has the ace high or king high flush. 
Anyway, Andy decides to go 35,000, totally fine to raise this size as well, roughly around a pot size raise, maybe a little bit smaller than that. So I don't mind going a more normal size. And when you get really deep, if you want to avoid using those gigantic sizes so you don't make a huge mistake, totally get on board with it, all well and good. Back over to Mariano with the Royal Flush. I think in this situation, Andy's wrapping a pretty specific range of hands. He's kind of saying he has a flush. It's possible Andy has a hand like a set that's trying to protect its equity against some draws. And it's also possible Andy occasionally has a hand like a straight that feels fairly good that's unlikely his opponent has a flush. And again, wants to try and protect his equity in the pot and build it. That said, those hands probably lean towards just betting the turn. So maybe that's a little bit thin from Andy. But in general, Andy is saying, hey, I've got probably a flush, maybe some kind of other thin value bet, or I'm bluffing you with some kind of diamond hand. Andy could have a hand like pocket tens here with a diamond. It'd be a nice hand to bluff with, block the straight flushes, and also have a bunch of equity. And maybe Andy could have a hand like ace king every now and then with a high diamond. Over to Mariano with the straight flush. I think that realistically you have to play just your range out of calls here. And this is a good tip at home if you're watching. So typically speaking, I hope you're watching because you've gotten this far in the video. Typically speaking, when you have a strong hand or rather your opponent is saying, I have a really nutted hand it typically does not make sense to raise again because Andy here either has a very strong hand or he's bluffing. So in Mariano's shoes, I think if you continue, you only want to be calling. You don't want to be putting in an additional raise. That way Mariano can call when he has a hand like aces or kings with a diamond or if he has two pair or set or a straight. Uh, he can fold some hands that are thinner value bets on that scale and then he can continue his really strong hands like straight flushes by just calling. Mariano thinks the same here and ultimately does decide to just go ahead and make the call. I really like how Mariano's played his hand so far. Let me go ahead and take a river. The river comes the six of diamonds, which is a pretty uh, interesting card. It's actually a very bad card for Mariano here because it makes it so that Andy's hand is less special. If Andy just had the ace king with the ace of diamonds, he has gotten there with the nuts. So there's more hands Andy can have that, that are, have improved. And if Mariano doesn't have a straight flush, he's going to have to be way more concerned about the existence of the nut flush. I got to say, seeing a 100k paw over at the Hustler, it's pretty exciting. But you know what would be more exciting? Million dollar pots. Which is why I'd like to tell you I'm going to be playing in the million dollar cash game over on Hustler. I'll be playing on the Monday stream on the 29th. I will see you guys there if you guys want to check it out. Head on over now to the Hustler. I'll be there. With my monies. Anyway, back to the hand. When the river is six of diamonds, it's a very interesting card because Andy's bluffs should contain a diamond. I actually saw a pretty sick hand between Linus Love and um, I think Barry Sweet back in I don't know, a year or two ago, where I saw in a similar spot uh, Linus check raised with a low flush, and when the fourth diamond came in, he just jammed the river. And when I first saw it, I thought that's really dumb. He has a flush, and then I realized if you check raise this turn you almost always have a diamond. So if you have a low flush, you got the bottom of your range. Pretty brilliant stuff there from Linus Love. Definitely enjoyed seeing that hand. How that applies here, Mariano should recognize is a very good card for Andy. Now, it's it's unclear exactly what high diamonds Andy could have that were semi-bluffing turn. Can he really not four bet ace king with a diamond pre? I would assume it's possible. Would he have a hand like ace queen ace diamonds pre? Maybe possible. But those hands would typically lean towards a four bet. So it is a little bit strange here in terms of what hands Andy can have that river diamonds. However you want to set, dice it up though, when Andy does check raise the turn, he's either got those strong hands or he has some kind of diamond hand. Maybe once in a while he has a set or a straight, but typically speaking, there aren't many bluffs that would not have a diamond that can then bet this river. Because of that, I think on this spot when Andy is so polarized on the turn and this rip card is so good for him, I think that those are factors that make you want to probably bet big, but in four flush spots where ranges are very narrow, I don't know if you actually get the opportunity to bet very big because both players should have high diamonds here a lot. Either one of these guys can have the ace of diamonds, king of diamonds type hand and can certainly look to go ahead and just continue. Because of that, I think I actually like a smaller size here. I think maybe something like half pot. You can get me on board with one third or half or two thirds. I don't think given how narrow these ranges are that it makes sense to go much larger than that. Counterpoint would be when Andy bets this river, he's saying he has the ace of diamonds. So if you're going to have just the ace of diamonds or a bluff, maybe you should go big. So if you want to go ahead and pot it, I don't hate that. 
But Mariano has so many high diamonds. I just don't think you can use a very large size here. Maybe I'm wrong. That's the one thing about poker. Everyone gets to have an opinion. Anyway, Andy decide, decides to go for a humongous bet here. Uh, firing the river and over bet 120,000 into 97. I really don't like this bet because Andy has to think what hands can really call me. And I mean, maybe if Mariano has kings with a diamond, he calls. But Mariano can have the nut flush. He can have, you know, he can have the nut flush. He can have, um, uh, rather, he could have flopped the nut flush. He could have aces with the diamond. He could have ace king ace of diamonds. He could have ace queen ace of diamonds. He can have all these hands. And then he can also have the straight flushes. So now Andy knows when he has the ace of diamonds, Mariano doesn't have those first hands I mentioned, but Mariano doesn't know what Andy has. So typically speaking in spots like this where ranges are very narrow and one person either has the card or they don't, you typically don't love using huge sizes because the reality is both players have them quite often. So I don't like this bet from Andy, although maybe because he's just so polar, it's fine. I'm repeating myself at this point, but regardless, it is an interesting situation. Over to Mariano now, and he pretty much immediately jams. Uh, very quick all-in there from Mariano. Uh, I think in Mariano's shoes, you definitely should tank a bit longer here. It's going to be hard to balance this out when you're bluffing. Let's say, for example, Mariano did have pocket tens with a diamond and wants to bluff because he knows that Andy can't have the straight flush, which would not be that unreasonable of a play to make every now and then. Um, you would definitely want to think it over before you go all-in. So I think that Mariano should take a little bit time here, a little bit more time here. It's the first decision from Mariano I don't really love, uh, but overall, of course, the action itself going all in here definitely the good play. Over to Andy after Mariano jams, and uh, he he basically just snaps it off. I I think that you need to consider your options here on the river. What does Mariano have? Right, he's saying he has a straight flush. He's not saying he has enough flush. He's saying he has the straight flush. If Mariano had the nut flush. He would probably just call here uh, because you have to think about what, what do you actually, if you jam the nut flush here, what calls you that you beat? And he's not going to overbet the pot call a jam with the king of diamonds. So I think in this situation, you need to take a moment and think about the fact that Mariano can have a straight flush. In Andy's shoes, Andy could have ace king of diamonds, ace 10 of diamonds. If we have ace four, those are possible. Maybe ace nine of diamonds, maybe king 10 of diamonds himself, maybe 10 eight of diamonds. Andy has an array of hands that are either straight flushes or nut flushes that block straight flushes. Those are all better call hands than ace four of diamonds. I think ace four, the, the four doesn't help you in any way. I would look to try and have a kicker that actually has some interaction with the value bets my opponent is repping. And also, guys, can we put all the nerdy shit to the side for a little bit? I know you've listened to my nerdy rants for Lord knows how many minutes at this point. But when someone under min raise jams the river on you, repping a straight flush... Yeah, there's maybe a couple of sickos out there in the world that can do that as a bluff, but uh, typically speaking, it'd be a safe bet. If you folded here for the rest of your life, you would never, ever, ever get shown a bluff. If you're deeper, maybe, because then your opponent will think they have fold equity. But when it's like a min-raise jam, a little over min-raise jam, it's going to be the goods. Thank you for joining me here today for a different style of poker hands. Let me know in the comments, did you like this or not? Uh, make sure, by the way, if you like the channel, subscribe. Tons of more content coming at you, and I'll see you again soon. Peace, everybody.